Welcome back to another week of Come Follow Me Art Journaling. This is Jackie, and this week we're studying about two unlikely mothers in the Bible, an old woman and a virgin. I really enjoyed reading about these women this week, and I learned a lot of things that I didn't know before, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later in the video. First, I'm going to explain what I'm doing in my art journal. So, I've spent a lot of time painting over the past few years, but what I really wanted to do is get better at just drawing. So, I decided to sketch out a bunch of different drawings of young mothers on the left-hand side of the page, and on the right-hand side, I drew my final picture, a drawing of Mary and baby Jesus. So, I knew that I wanted to paint this side, and I recently started using a new medium called gouache. It's like a cross between acrylics and watercolors, so it's opaque and thick like acrylics, but it's water-based, and it can be watered down to be more transparent like watercolors. I've only used them once before using them here, so I have very little experience, but it seemed fun, so I gave it a shot. Um, I do have a video of the other painting that I did, which was more like a children's book illustration. If you want to see that video, I'll edit the footage and post it. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would like. I'm not entirely sure, since I know most people are just here for the Come Follow Me Art Journaling, but it's still a small channel, so I'm trying to get a feel for what people like, and if you like to see other art videos as well, I'm happy to share other, other art every once in a while. So, anyway, since I'm so new to using gouache, I found it to be much more challenging than I was, than I was anticipating. It was a lot of fun, but it has its own qualities, and you have to approach the painting differently than you would with watercolors, which is what I'm always, almost always using. So, with watercolor, you generally paint from light to dark. You leave the highlights and then you build up layers to darken the shadows. With gouache, people generally generally put down a thin layer of the local color in each area and then you build up the darks and the lights, giving and taking until you're happy. So it's like you start with more of a mid-tone and then you add in some darks and then the highlights over that. At least that's what I've seen. So, what I found to be challenging is that you also have to be more exact when you're mixing your colors because with watercolor, you can layer your paints and that changes the color a bit as you put more layers down. With this, you have to figure out the exact color that you want in a certain spot and mix that color and then put it there and then it doesn't move. <laughs> I struggled a lot with getting the colors right. Um, it got a bit easier as I went on, but and I'm like, ultimately I'm happy with my painting and how it turned out in the end, so it's fine. So if you wanna draw or paint something similar, you don't have to use the same mediums that I'm using. You can do something similar in colored pencil maybe or markers. If you're wanting to try something new though, despite my challenges, I would definitely recommend trying out gouache. For a medium, it's pretty inexpensive and you get a lot out of it. And because of that, I feel like I can just use it without being all precious about it and worrying that I'm wasting it. Not that I want to waste it either, I just want to feel free when I'm painting. So, what I also like about it is that it's water soluble, so even if it dries out on your palette, you can just use water on it and it reactivates it. My favorite part though, was that when you paint, it just feels so nice. It's like as smooth as butter. And a lot of the time, I feel like it's working with me and not against me, which is a rare thing in art, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I do like using gouache, so there's that little review if you wanted to consider trying it as well. And I'll put a link to what I'm using down in the description box below. Alright, so on to what we studied in Come Follow Me. I personally really enjoyed studying these two chapters this week, Matthew 1 and Luke 1. Like I said, I learned a lot that I didn't know before. I'm not really going to go into detail about the academic side of things. There's already so many great resources for that, and I'm not an expert by any means. When I read the scriptures, one of my goals is to learn them really well. But more importantly, I want to know how I can apply what I'm reading to my own life. What I want to talk about in these videos are the things that I learn on a more personal level and share that with you here. So, starting in Luke chapter 1, the first thing that Luke does is explain who he is and who he's talking to. He tells us that he wasn't an eyewitness to Jesus Christ, but he studied his life enough that he wants to write his own account. So, one of the first things I was thinking about was, we don't have to be eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ to be able to share our testimonies with others. Why would I want to share my testimony of Jesus Christ with others? 
it's my experience as a follower of Christ. There are so many aspects that I could talk about, but I realize it boils down to just this. I've personally seen both sides. I've lived with and without the gospel. Ultimately, my life is far better with Jesus Christ than without. There's a peace that comes when you believe in Christ and you live his teachings. There's genuine hope when everything seems hopeless, on a personal level and on a worldwide level. Without Christ, you don't have anything to anchor you. With all the turmoil and noise going on, it's easy to slip into despair. Another thing is that Jesus Christ taught us how to live. That gives us a lot of clarity and direction. There are a million voices and opinions on everything under the sun these days. Opinions on what's right and what's wrong, if anything is wrong at all. Except thinking that there is anything that is wrong is what's wrong, and in that case, you're so wrong that no one should even talk to you except to tell you that you're wrong. (laughs) Without firm ground to stand on, a person can easily get lost in it all, being blown about in the wind of arbitrary moral codes that no one can live up to, no matter how hard they try. But the gospel of Jesus Christ provides that stable ground, a foundation of timeless principles that hold up no matter the situation, person, time, or place. His gospel makes many things clear that otherwise would be extremely confusing. Jesus Christ's gospel is so sound that if everyone were to live it, we would have world peace. And as a matter of fact, that will be the case, and we get to look forward to that when Jesus Christ reigns during the millennium. And there's the personal peace that Jesus Christ provides through the atonement, a way to wash away our sins. Without the atonement, all we can really do is suppress guilt and attempt to justify our behavior. But with Christ, we can truly be free. In Luke 1.79, Zacharias declared that the Lord hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So, in our study, there are four people talked about, Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, and Zacharias. And what's made clear is that they all have a solid understanding of scripture and prophecy. Why is that important and what does that have to do with us? Some of the things I wrote down to answer that question is this. It's important to know scripture and prophecy because it helps us to understand when those prophecies are being fulfilled. The next big thing in history of the world is the second coming of Jesus Christ, and we're all first-hand witnesses to the events prior to that. We're here to prepare the world for the second coming, but we can't do that if we don't even know what's happening. (laughs) We want to be prepared, and we don't want his coming to come upon us as a thief in the night. So it's important to read and know the scriptures and prophecies. Also, scripture is the word of Christ. It's the way that God speaks to us. And when we learn the scriptures well, they become a part of us. They become a part of how we talk and think, and ultimately how we behave. 2 Nephi 32, 2 and 3 says, Do ye not remember that I said unto you, that after ye had received the Holy Ghost, ye could speak with the tongue of angels? And now, how could you speak with the tongue of angels, save it were by the Holy Ghost? Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I said unto you, feast upon the words of Christ. For behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things what ye should do. So the final thing that I want to talk about is what I thought of while pondering on how Zacharias and Elizabeth approached the birth of their son John and how they must have raised him. John had a divine mission that was absolutely vital. He was to prepare people to receive Jesus Christ. His parents knew that. His parents were also some of the most righteous people. Elizabeth was a woman who was sensitive to the Spirit and had only love and rejoicing toward Mary. Zacharias was a priest in the Aaronic priesthood and was a devout temple worker. No doubt they knew and understood the scriptures. They had to, to understand what was happening and to be able to show the faith that they had. Zacharias was doubtful when he was first visited by Gabriel in the temple, telling him that Elizabeth would have a baby. Because of his doubt, he asked for more of a sign to know if this was true. So he was struck dumb for the next nine months. 
Once John was born and Zacharias declared that his name was, in fact, John, his tongue was loosed, and the first thing he did was praise God. In his praise, it was evident that he knew the scriptures and the prophecies, and he understood God's plan in a holistic way. He was filled with the Spirit and prophesied, and those that heard were able to believe and have joy. As far as John goes, they knew that they had to teach him. How could he fulfill his mission if he didn't know and understand the scriptures as well? That's what I must do for my own children. I need to prepare them for their own missions, whatever that may be. I need to prepare them to go out into this world as ready as they can be, with testimonies of their own. They need to understand the scriptures and the prophecies for our day. They need to know how to find the answers for themselves. They need to have their own personal relationship with Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. They're going to be witnesses to many more of the events prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. They need to understand what they're seeing. The more they know, the more they'll be able to discern truth and to see clearly when they're put up against the philosophies of men. They need to be fully equipped. How can they be warriors of light without all their armor? I keep coming back to this in my scripture study and I want to make this my highest priority. Nothing is more important. So it's my hope and prayer that I'll be equal to the task and I pray that for all of you as well. All right, so that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far and you enjoyed this video, please like the video. It helps YouTube to know that this content was enjoyed and to suggest it to more people. Also, subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss any videos. Also, remember that if you create your own art journal pages and would like to share, feel free to post on Instagram with the hashtag ComeFollowMeArtJournaling or email me at ComeFollowMeArt at gmail.com. Both of those will be in the description box. I'd love to see your art and I'll be sharing your masterpieces in my future videos. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.